Hello everybody, welcome back to Reaper Minis TV. For this episode, we're going to jump right into a whole bunch of chronoscope reviews first. First up is a sci-fi female sniper. She's standing more in an at-ready or display pose than ready to shoot someone. She's wearing what look like to be high-top sneakers, short shorts, very short shorts, a jacket, but also a bustier that's got some frill at the bottom of it. So I really don't get that she's part of a military unit here, probably some kind of freelance adventurer or something like that. She does have some goggles that are sort of under her bangs that are hanging down on her forehead. There were a few faint mold lines on the model, but this cleaned up in just a few seconds and she was ready to base and prime in no time at all. Here we have Mickey O'Doul. He's billed as a Wild West bartender. Now, I don't have a whole lot of use for a Wild West figure because I don't play any Wild West games, but I could see using him as the bartender in a Call of Cthulhu game where the investigators are in a bar and this Irish bartender has to break up a fight or fight off some kind of eldritch creature or something like that. And you could even use him as a player character investigator that kind of gets sucked into the whole Cthulhu mythos that uh, other investigators are looking into. Mickey is a single piece model. You can see he's got a sawn off shotgun in his right hand that he's sort of resting on his shoulder. In his left hand he's got a bottle which would not be surprising to see for somebody exposed to the Cthulhu mythos to turn to drink. Like the sniper we just looked at, he did have a few faint mold lines but these were pretty easily taken care of. And I think you could easily paint up Mickey in some drab colors pretty quickly, and it would look pretty good. Okay, here we have Peaches, and she is described as a biker girl. This is a single-piece miniature. She is wearing chaps and a jacket, so she has her biker leathers on, but it looks like she's wearing a bikini under that. You can see the bikini bottom and the bikini top. She's showing off a lot of cleavage, but she's not carrying any weapons or equipment or anything like that. There are several straps and buckles and extra details along her chaps and her belt. I think you could get the most use out of her in some kind of post-apocalyptic game like All Things Zombie, or maybe in Pulp City or some kind of superhero game where she's part of a gang of normals that the supers have to deal with. Here we have an addition to the existing alien overlords that have come out from Reaper. This guy is in a pose where he looks sort of like he's running forward, firing a blaster pistol at somebody. He has the same big bulbous head that has the brain kind of growing out of it that the other two have. So he fits in perfectly with the other two, but I am just not 100% sold on the pose. It just doesn't look quite right to me the way he's running forward. It looks almost kind of forced or a gangly kind of loping forward kind of look to me. Maybe I'm off base on that, but it just strikes me that way. Now, he did need more cleaning than some of the other chronoscope figures we looked at this time. There were some bits of flash on the model, and there's also a piece of metal that goes from the casting tab up to his right foot that you'll need to clip off, and you need to be careful when you're trimming that off because it does attach right to his boot. Now, as far as the pose is concerned, I was able to bend the figure in a couple places to make it look a little less exaggerated, and I guess maybe that's it, what I was thinking of. It looks a little exaggerated the way that he's running forward. So I was able to carefully bend it back to where it's less so, but I was probably not quite as careful as I should have been because I ended up snapping off the right foot and the whole boot but I'm going to be able to glue it back into place just fine and the way that I've got it bent the toe of his right boot is going to just barely be touching the base so I'll be able to glue it and secure it there also in addition to up at the ankle where I broke it off so you don't have to do this I just did it because I thought it made the pose look a little bit better if you're fine with the pose just ignore all of this he does fit in perfectly with all the other overlords and I do hope that they continue putting out more of these guys because they are pretty cool this next figure comes in two pieces. It is Miss Muffet and Spider. And the second piece is a textured base insert that goes into the round slotted base that she comes with. It has a spider on it, a bowl of porridge, and, or actually, porridge, curds and whey. This is Miss Muffet, not the three bears. So her curds and whey has been spilled on the ground, has an overturned bowl. There's also a large spoon on the ground along with some rocks. Miss Muffet is wearing a very short frilly dress that shows off a lot of cleavage and she's got a mallet that's behind her back and it looks like she's sort of sizing up the spider getting ready to squish it with the big mallet that she has. There was a bit of cleaning needed here. There were visible mold lines and a little bits of extra metal from the casting process and to be honest with you, I'm really not sure what to use her for right now. It just hasn't come to me. If you were doing some kind of diorama or something like that, I think 
you could probably use her in that. Uh, otherwise, I'm just really not sure what to use her for right now. And our last chronoscope figure for this time around is Sam Ayers. He's a pulp investigator. And immediately, he made me think of Harry Dresden from The Dresden Files. I really like that show and wish they hadn't canceled it. Um, look for it on Netflix if you get a chance, but I digress. Sam Ayers is a multiple-piece model. You get two choices of what to put in his right hand. You can either put a flashlight in there or a pistol. And then for the rest of the model, Sam is wearing a suit, and he has an overcoat and a large scarf that goes around his neck. And he also wears a hat and carries a staff in his left hand. The wood detailing on the staff is very well done, and there are also several additional small details on his suit. I like this figure a lot, and I think he would fit perfectly into a Call of Cthulhu game of pretty much any era. But you could also use him in a modern setting like a Harry Dresden kind of guy. Okay, on to some Pathfinder figures now. And this first one is Celtiel. He's an Eldritch Knight. And just looking at him right out of the blister, I thought to myself, there is no way this guy doesn't end up in my various Dark Elf armies. Even if he's not supposed to be a Dark Elf, he is now for me. He'll end up in my Warhammer Fantasy army. I'm not sure exactly what. He might be a spellcaster, even though generally Warhammer Fantasy Dark Elf spellcasters are female. Maybe he's got a bound spell, and that's what the thing that's coming out of his right hand is. But right from the beginning, I've loved this model. Both arms and what they're carrying come as separate pieces. In his left arm and hand, he carries a sword. And you do have some choice about how to pose the left arm and sword. You can have it pointing down like it is in the picture here, or you can rotate it up quite a bit and it'll look fine you won't compromise the look of the model at all in his right hand he holds some kind of flaming manifestation of a bird or some kind of winged creature uh, I look at it as some kind of bound spell but that's because I'm going to probably use him as a spell caster in Warhammer Fantasy if you're using him as a player character model in D&D or any kind of role-playing game he would make a good fighter spell caster combination character I think it is an outstanding model there are a ton of details on this model it is just beautiful and and I think he would even fit into my dark elf army for warlord as soon as savage north comes out and i'm ready to build them so wonderful model here i can't say enough good things about it this next figure is sioni and this one is billed as the original version now sioni has already been released as part of the pathfinder line and you can see the original one actually i should say the previously released one right here so you can compare the two with the previously released one if i'm remembering correctly you had the option of either her hand or the staff to put in her left hand and with this one, she's a single piece model that has the staff in her left hand holding it up in the air. Not a dissimilar pose from the first one, because she's wearing a lot of the same equipment and gear, but it's just a slightly different take on a previously released model. And we're going to round things out with a trio of Dark Heaven Legends figures. Here we have a blister of three classic orcs, and these three guys really make me think of old school D&D, like when I first started with the red and blue box sets of d and I'm not sure how many people remember that that are watching this right now, but they just kind of have that flavor to me. All three of them are single piece models, and you get one with sword and shield, one with a halberd, and one that is firing a bow. And while I prefer the newer black orcs that Reaper's releasing right now, these guys do have a certain nostalgic value to them. Alright everybody, thanks for watching this episode of Reaper Minis TV. We'll see you next time.